Anyway, so looking back now, um, I always say to junior winter, middle-aged, pipe, slippers, um, you know, I'm sure you've got a whippet, paper under your arm. Let, let's just say kind of the highlight of your years, do you know what I mean? Looking back on your career, you know, some people, I personally think um, you are up there with your Bomber Grahams, your Ryan Rhodes, your Kevin Mitchells, uh, Kirkland Langs, your Michael Watson, the greatest fighter to never win a world title. You know, you actually beat world champions Vincenzo Nadiello, Mario Galvano. Um, was there another one? I'm just trying to. Uh, looking back, I mean, does it, you know, keep you awake at night or does, do you think, oh, fuck it, who cares? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, Jim. It's, it's there. It's always there. It always will be there. I wouldn't part of my life. But, um, and that was my life at the time. Mm. So did you I, live the life of as a pro? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I did, I was dedicated to, to because Nick Manners told me, he said, the only reason he started drinking was because you got him on the Guinness. Uh, you told him it was non-alcoholic or something like that. So you lived, you lived the proper life then. I lived a proper life. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was true to the sport. That was the thing was, what I can say. I, I, I do it right because I, I understood that how tough boxing is. You, you, the more chances are, again, the likelihood of you getting beat becomes greater the further you go up the ladder, and that is what it is. But, yeah, I, I don't hold no grudges to the sport. Mm. The sport I love. Has it been good to you, hasn't it? It's been good to me. It's been good to me. I love the sport. Travel the world. I, I always did, Jimmy. I love the sport anyway. I was always... Could I do it again? I don't know. I don't know that one. Would you change anything if you did? I, I'd change a lot. Because Junior Winter said to me, if I could go back and do it again, I didn't realise boxing was a business. So you need... You know, first thing these days, you'll know this, when uh, promoters looking at a young fighter, they look at his social media. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How big of a following he's got. And obviously that wasn't like that in your, in your day. Um, but if someone had said to you, Mickey Duff's office on 60 to 66 Wardour Street, you're going to become a British, a Commonwealth, a European champion, a free-time world title challenger, would you have been happy? I don't know. I think you want the dream, don't you? You want mm. you want it all. But um, would I go back? Would I go back? Would I do it again? The only thing I was thinking about the other day, and it, it got me, because I had to give myself a second thought. It wasn't straight away answer. If I went back and I had to do it all again, there's only one way I could change it. I'd just move up a weight division. Light heavyweight. Yeah. I, I How tall are you, Henry? I'm 5'11". Oh, so you're I was a decent always a, height. I'm always a little, but your I'm legs always, were really thick. Yeah, I've always been a little fat. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah. So I've always struggled with weight. And when I when I boxed for England, I was always like 11 stone, 11. And that used to kill me. So when I went into the pro, pro ranks, I, um, it was 11 stone I was going to make. Sorry, 11, 11, 6. Yeah. I was going to make middleweight. I, I wouldn't make middleweight. I would not. What was the heaviest you ever gone up to between fights? Uh, I'd, I'd go up. 14? Yeah, 14 and suddenly. 15? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it just was. It was what it was. Yeah. And um, that just yeah. It just what twelve and a half stone at the time. It'd give me an extra half a stone. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. sorry. I do put on an yeah. extra half a stone in my legs, and being able to do what I could do. A lot of the times, Jim. This is the truth. I used to box. I don't go on about boxing anymore. It is what it is. I'm an older man now. And but when I used to, I used to suffer that much in the gym to make the weight. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I go through the rounds. So I was unable to do anything where on a skill level. I used to, have to take the punches and hopefully come through and, and and win the win the battle in the end. And nine times out of ten, that worked out lucky enough for me. But if I could have moved up. That I'd have, I'd have certainly had more in me. Mm. I mean, I pers I always thought until I'm earlier this year, and you said to me the words, Jamie, I was done. I always thought you walked in from boxing that little bit too early, but obviously you were going to box a fellow Yorkshire man, Crawford Asher. What a fight that would have been oh, as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that was he 33 wins and I think 28 were not. He was a thunderous, murderous yeah. puncher, fought Michael Nunn and all them, and that, that would have been a classic. You know, that would, uh, I personally think that would have been a 50-50. Um, you know, but 
I think, you know, you were trained for that one day and I think you just said to Gary, you know what, I'm done. Was it you chat with your dad and did you just know? Was it almost as if God spoke to you? I think what it was, the truth, it didn't come from there. It wasn't it won that one because I asked myself things anyway. When I got beat by Eubanks, I, I really pushed Jimmy. Was, was, was I good enough to beat him? I don't know. I'd give everything I had. I think it was humanly impossible for me to give any more on that night. I'd give everything. And like I said to you before in the interview, I um, I left some of me in that ring that night. Mm. I didn't leave anything out. I left some of me and I lost a lot of me that night. And it was out of, truthfully, it was out of frustration. I went somewhere afterwards and I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, I didn't know where I was going to go because I pushed really hard. Didn't know where I was going to go. Was that more than a crossroads, I was over the other side. I didn't know where I was going to go. First time in my life, for a lot of years, I'd ask myself, I don't know where I'm going to go now. Can I climb this ladder again? Because I get to number one each time. Nobody gave me a chance. I got to number one. Mm. And the man I was speaking to, he said to me, where are you going to go now? And my face was up. And, and yeah. And it was almost like a defiance. Mm. And I said, what do you mean, where am I going to go? Just, again, just what you, how mental we become. I, and I said, what do you mean? And he went, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to? And I, I almost put it as like, does he think I'm finished? And I said, I'm going to go up. I'm going to put my trap suit on. And I'm going to go for a run. And I'm going to phone the kid up mm. and tell him to get me absolutely everybody. Mm. Everybody. I'll get back to world number one. And I'll fight for the world title. And I'll win. Mm. And I did that. Three, went, year, three years it took you, though, from 94 yeah. to Robin Reed, wasn't it? Yeah. And I climbed every, I, I boxed everybody. I yeah. took on them world So you champions. did it the hard way. I did the hard way. I won the European Champions against fighters who were really trying to fuck. Yeah. It was so awkward for me. Mm -hmm. There were two southpaws chucked in that. And I fought against losing all that way. And I got back to the world number one. And the, the rest of the history. But I, I'd done it in defiance. Mm. I didn't really do it because I wanted the love of the game anymore. And that's the truth. That's the, I'm doing the gospel truth. I'd done it because it was just pure ignorance. And... Like I said, defiance, and I was suffering all that weight loss. I was suffering, but I thought I'm going to do it. And I even fought for the world championship under them circumstances. So, am I right in saying because of all that, which was probably bubbling from year '94, '95, '96, '97, that you officially retired '98, '99? Uh, it was almost easy for you to walk away. You knew, didn't you? I, I knew. There wasn't a year or two later where you thought, "Oh, maybe go." No, just... I, I, I knew. I knew. And it, it wasn't the same anymore. Jimmy. There's certain exercises where my knees couldn't take it anymore. I had to like, from a, a way out, I had to give them exercises up and don't do this, don't do that, do that instead, do that, do that. Do that. So not there was a lot of things not the same. 